describe between the two? Can you say it again? What would you say the difference is between taking a decision and arriving to a decision? Oh, I understand. Uh, yes or no? <laughs> uh, ethics versus law. Law versus ethics. Law versus ethics. Uh, uh, Could you imagine that a decision can happen without anyone to take or to arrive? We, have, we are into a, a social today movement where We have given a lot of power to action. It seems very important to bring changes. It, it's quite funny, you know, because sometimes people want to, they just want to change for changing. You know, they want to do something just for a change. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just wait. And then, uh, We have given a lot of importance to, to action. In this tradition, action is what comes at the end. That is, for us, when, when we give importance to action, simultaneously give importance to the actor. It's we who is doing. You know, for example, in, in a situation which is conflict, when, when there is a conflict between two people, some of us, we have this tendency of to become a, a victim, we don't act. And some of us, it's the opposite, they are, they are doing. And we have noticed very often that the people who are acting are less touched by memory than the one who were acted upon. You understand what I mean? So, we think that action is very important. Now, in those traditions, there is another point of view, which is the, let's say, the, the common way of acting is giving much importance to the actor. And when the actor acts too strongly, it brings a division in between him or her and the other. And remember, division is conflict. Separation is suffering, is harming, all the rest of it. So, now, in this tradition, we say that what is important is not action. It is, once again, consciousness trying to, to enlarge the quality of perception, as I see what I call consciousness, and simultaneously kindness, affection, or love. Now, what we say is that when these two qualities are reaching and a level of intensity which is important. The togetherness of these two, and God, God knows nothing now, but God knows no why, <laughs> and the togetherness of these two brings a movement, brings an action. And you cannot identify yourself with this movement. So, we have a way which might sound uneasy, I don't know, uh, which says that what we have to do is to become the servant of, of 
this togetherness of consciousness and love, to be the servant, not to be the actor, which has to do with humility, but humility with dignity, no? not trying. So we could say in our language uh, spontaneity, but spontaneity, not the spontaneity which is coming from the memory. Or we could say a creative action, but not creative action coming from the known, coming from nobody knows where. From nothingness, I don't know. So it might, it might sound to you quite mystical, and you're right, it is. <laughs> but we are, we, are, we are going to points where there's no other way of being mystical. There's no other possibility. But cleverly, not stupidly. <laughs> I hope you don't feel trapped. Yeah. Can we please close with a, um, a mantra from Nidra Yoga? We would much appreciate it if we can share that with us. Just for two minutes to close, because we would much appreciate it. I think, I think he has the mantra. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we think that mantras are like magic formulas. And uh, you mean you want to chant? Yeah, you, if you, you can chant us the Aum mantra, we will much appreciate it. So we will much appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I've been doing for two hours. Yeah, 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 yeah in a way, yeah. But um, we, can, uh, we can bring it to the... Um, um, to life. To the hedonistic circuit. Mm. <laughs> or, um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not at all uh, in rituals. To me, mantra is a ritual. And I'm not at all into rituals because I slowly discover that. Rituals are once again bringing division in between the one who's supposed to know and the other who are well, not supposed to know. And uh, you're Indian, as far as I are you Indian? No, I'm Romanian from here. Oh, well, you look Indian. Yeah, I'm into my jeans, sorry. It's the same with me. Now I've got white hair, so when I go to India, they, they, they still come and ask me, uh, what do you come in my country? And when I have hair like yours, they know how Yeah, I'm not much into rituals because I have discovered that uh, it brings a division in between the one who's supposed to, or supposed to know and the one who's supposed to not know. And uh, we are not here into uh, the class, in, 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 into, in, into the situation of, uh, how could we say, uh, dogmatic or ritualistic teaching. Yeah. So, please don't ask me. Yeah, I'm sorry, no problem, no problem. Mm -hmm. But 10 years ago when I, we met, uh, it was on a class of Nidra Yoga, and I remember that. Uh, Where did we meet? We met uh, in 2005 or 2006 at the International Yoga Conference. In Achha, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. How you were there. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, then at that time, maybe I gave a workshop, mantra workshop. Yeah, Nidra Yoga. Oh, workshop. Workshop. Uh -huh. Yeah, one hour and a half. Yeah, I was there, and I was very happy. So there's going to be a. Five days seminar. 
beginning of January. Um, if you leave your what is it, email, yeah, email, you are now at some Okay, okay. And we're around somewhere because we don't know where. Yeah. Request? Uh, well, we are going tomorrow to visit a place which is two, two hours from here. I don't know where to go. Is that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Maybe there, maybe. I don't know. Thank you. You'll be in for, I suppose. For sure. For sure. Uh, one question to close, maybe, um, how are you also you want to close? <laughs> <laughs> Side, um, so I understand that you are going to discuss about Vidyana Bhairava, Bhairava in the sense of using also the text and also the commentary of your master, respectively, uh, Sri Lakshman Jo. And I would like you to introduce a little bit, or maybe to talk a little bit about, about Lakshman Jo and how do you perceive him. What was your relation in those times when you met him, and how was your life in uh, in Kashmir in, uh, mm -hmm. in that time, in that in that period of time? I think the 60s, right? 1960s. Mm -hmm. This is very anecdotal. It is very simple. It's right? anecdotal, also. but it also has to do with clarity a lot. Uh -huh. So, well, first thing is. Uh, it will not be commentaries on the text. And we talk, it will be practicing because each shloka, each verse is bringing to Practice. practical things. But it is it does also to do with understanding. And it will not be uh, commentaries from somebody else. It's my own commentaries. <laughs> it's my own way of proceeding. You know, in these traditions, uh, a tradition is a living process. And many of us will think that what is traditional does not evolve. If a tradition does not evolve, it is just decay. Also, a transfer of knowledge that began itself. No, it's a transfer of energy. Of course, that's true. And uh, this, let's say this, I could call it. Oh, this is very good. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, uh, let's say, this realization can be transmitted. And the transmission itself is making the tradition alive. But it is transmitted from, how could we say, the quality of freedom, which is not depending on, on the forms on the formal way of, of, of teaching. And in fact, uh, as far as I have traveled into traditional languages, what I found is that uh, when the teacher says to his student, now you stop teaching, it is never for repeating what the teacher was saying. It is most of the time because the teacher thinks or feels that the student has enough integrated the, what he learned, what he studied, to transmit it in its own way without betraying the death. Great tension. Yeah, no, not the, the death. Death, you understand? Of course. But I was thinking more of Icha. 
of, of each other. Uh, so now, uh, I met uh, Swami Lakshmanju in I think it was 76 maybe. I don't remember the precise year. Or maybe in 81. I don't remember exactly. And uh, he was living outside of Srinagar. He was not very much known. And what, uh, what we did for a long time was looking at his family photos. <laughs> it was the main activity for a long time. Having tea, looking at the photo album of his family. And you say, oh, this is this one, this one. And sometimes there was some jig between. Could we go to some <laughs> teaching? And very often he was saying, you're not attentive enough. We are into teaching, but you're not attentive, so you don't see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and days were passing, and again, looking at photos. That, that was the way the relationship uh, uh, was ripe. And then four more things started later. But that was a long time. And there were many people. I mean, I'm sorry. There were not many people, but many of us who were coming. This is what we were doing. Looking at the album of the family album